guys, it's Abby here and welcome back to another video or, for your, or if you are new here, welcome. I hope you decide to stick around and subscribe. I do post content every single week on this channel and today's video is going to be about how you can be in a calorie deficit without tracking food because tracking food honestly shouldn't be your main priority because you need to have a little bit of food freedom and food is, and food is bloody delicious. So we want to make sure that we are enjoying life and food as best as we can. So if that is something you are interested in, just make sure you stick around and let's get into the video. So if you wanna lose some weight, that means that you need to be in a calorie deficit. And what that means is you need to make sure that you are burning more energy than you are consuming. Whether that means you are moving your body more or eating a little bit less, either way, that's going to put you in a calorie deficit. So if you aren't sure what your deficit is, this can take some time to tailor it over a few weeks or maybe a couple of months to ensure that you kind of know where you sit. So for example, um, my maintenance calories is 2000. With that maintenance calories, that means um, what I'm consuming, I'm not gonna gain weight, I'm not gonna lose weight, I'm just gonna basically stay the same. If you want to gain weight, you obviously need to eat a little bit more. And if you want to lose weight, you need to eat a little bit less, but just make sure that you aren't dropping your calories too low. Otherwise you're gonna come around and you're gonna feel more fatigued. You're gonna be tired. You're gonna lack energy. So we want to avoid that. So there are a lot of tracking apps out there. I think the most popular one is probably MyFitnessPal. So basically you can put what your goals, what your calorie goal is. It will let you know when you are putting in your food, how much calories that can, um, that takes up, and it'll also let you know like your, the carbs, the fats, and the protein that's in that food that you just consumed as well. And it'll also tell you, let's say you've eaten your breakfast and your lunch, it'll let you know how many calories you have left over. I feel like if you are wanting to track your food, I it's really important that you don't do it over a long period of time. I recommend about two weeks. If you do it for way too long, I feel like this is where bad eating behaviors can come from. You can create a bad relationship with food. You can start looking at food as numbers rather than what it is, which is energy and food. So if you are wanting to track, just try not to do it over a long period of time. I did it for about a year. Worst, honestly, worst idea of my life. My relationship with food just got so bad. You could literally show me anything and I could be like, yep, yeah, that's how much it has. That's how many calories it has in it. So we want to make sure that we want to avoid these bad behaviors, these bad eating behaviors. That way you're able to enjoy life and food. So I feel like after about a couple weeks of tracking food, you kind of have a general idea on what foods you want to consume and you're able to understand food a little bit more. And honestly, you don't really need to track for too long. If you're in a calorie deficit, you still need to make sure that you are eating and providing your body with what it needs. There are three major macronutrients that we need to make sure that we are consuming and putting into our diet, which is protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Having an adequate amount of these macros will make sure that your body has the energy and the nutrients that it needs. That way you can be the best version of yourself. That way you can hit your gym goals with no issues at all because you have that energy from that food that you are consuming. On the three um, macronutrients, if you weren't aware, protein is the most satiating macronutrient. This means the more protein you have in your diet, the more satisfied your body is going to be and you aren't going to have um, more bursts of hunger levels throughout the day. So for example, after breakfast, if you got an adequate amount of protein in it, you aren't going to feel hungry again in about 20 minutes. Your body will be able to sustain that hunger levels for a couple hours instead. With doing so, this means that you're going to be eating less without even realizing and you're going to be in a calorie deficit without realizing and you're just going to lose some weight without really having to put much effort and thought into it. So the meals that you are creating, just make sure what you are putting together has, has a great amount of volume. High volume foods makes calorie deficits so much easier. So on high volume foods, you actually need to eat more when you're in a calorie deficit. And you're probably thinking, why would I eat more if I'm trying to lose weight? But the, the higher volume of foods you are consuming, like I said, that's going to, that is going to sustain your levels um, for longer. So you need to be looking at foods that are a little bit lower in calorie, but give you a whole lot of volume. So for example, if you are craving some chocolate, 
Chocolate is very easy to overconsume and it is quite calorie dense. If you have a whole block of chocolate, that is, that is um, like I said, calorie dense. It has a lot of calories in it, but it's not going to keep you very full. What you can do instead is have a couple rows of the chocolate, pair it with some strawberries, some apples. That is going to lower the calories of that meal you're having, but you're having more, but it's lower in calorie. But it's also going to sustain your hunger level. It's going, to, it's going to sustain your cravings as well. You're still having that chocolate, but now you're incorporating a food group by having some fruit as well. So there isn't any need to cut out any food groups. You just need to be smart when you're putting your meals together. So what I'm having for lunch is actually a really great example of a low calorie and high volume food. So I have my brown rice and quinoa and my bread, which is my carbohydrates. I have my tofu, which is my protein, and I have my avocado on the bread, which is my healthy fats. I also have some veggies in there as well. So this is actually quite a lot of food, but this is going to sustain my hunger levels, keep me fuller for longer, and I have also included all three macronutrients in this meal as well. So food doesn't have to be difficult, and it doesn't have to be boring either. Oh, and um, there's also teriyaki sauce in this as well to give it a bit of flavor as well. So I'm really excited to devour this. So that brings me on to my next point. There is no need to cut out any foods or any food groups when you're in a calorie deficit. I feel like there is a lot of bad connotation around um, fats and carbohydrates, especially when it comes to food and people wanting to lose weight because they feel like foods that are high in fats and carbohydrates are automatically going to make them gain weight. But these macronutrients are really, really important in your diet. If you, are, if you are wanting to lose some weight, you're going into a calorie deficit, just remember that there isn't any reason to cut out any sort of food groups or foods or do an insane amount of exercise to burn off the food that you consumed because you don't need to be doing that. It's not necessary and it's also really not sustainable long term. Short term fixes can lead to long term problems. We are setting up ourselves now for when we get older and the healthier um, habits that you put into your life now can really affect how we are when we are older. Just remember we want to ensure that our choices are sustainable long term and our actions are sustainable long term as well. With that you can eat and enjoy all the foods that you want in moderation. So just make sure that the um, more nutrient dense foods you're having, you're having more of and the ones that lack a little bit of nutrients, like chocolate, you can still enjoy those, but just have them in a small amount. So kind of think about that 80-20 rule when you're consuming food as well. The last point I want to discuss is that it shouldn't be an all-in mindset. You need to ensure you give yourself some freedom as well. Just like life, it is all about balance, my friends. If you overeat one day, that is completely fine. That is not going to ruin all the progress that you have been doing. Just like if you under eat one day, you aren't automatically going to lose weight the next day. But if you do feel like you found yourself, you've gained some weight, honestly, do not sweat it. It's okay. Just start fresh the next day. And I feel like a lot of the time people wait for a new week, a new month, a new year to start again, to try again, to start something new. But why do we have to wait for that new beginning to come around? If it's a random Wednesday, why can't I just start the next day, which is a Thursday. We don't really need to be waiting for that new beginning to come around. Just start again the next day, try again the next day, and you'll smash it. I feel like we are just so hard on ourselves and it's so easy to tell our friends and the people around us, it's okay, you know, everyone goes through these periods, etc. But we need to make sure that we are taking our own advice and that one day isn't gonna set us back with our goals and our progress. It's just one day. It's totally fine. Sorry, last thing I just quickly want to touch on. I feel like the fitness industry is booming. People are wanting to lift weights. People are wanting to get stronger. And I'm really, really loving the way society is going at the moment. I feel like we are going in a great direction with body positivity. We do have a long way to go. But all in all, I feel like we are doing slightly better. But with that, if you are in a calorie deficit and you're lifting some weights, you're getting stronger, that scale that you're stepping on, the number could go up. Like my numbers have gone up. I have gained five kilos. And honestly, in the past that would have set me into a downward spiral, but I am the healthiest, 
fittest and strongest I have ever been. Gaining weight shouldn't be a bad thing because I am gaining muscle, but I'm losing some fat. And I don't really care about the scale anymore. It shouldn't be your main priority. Because like I said, you could be gaining muscle, could be losing fat. That scale isn't going to show you everything. It, it's, it doesn't know your bone density. It doesn't know your muscle mass. It, it doesn't know all the facts. It just knows how much you weigh. That's it. But there's just so much more to that. So just make sure that you aren't fixated on that number that that scale is saying. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found this insightful, informative. You don't need to track food if you want to be in a calorie deficit. If you do want to track, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is no need to do it more than two weeks. We want to make sure that we have a good relationship with food. We are consuming enough energy. We are consuming enough food. That way we can put that energy back out into the world. So with that, just remember that one bad day isn't a setback and tomorrow can always be better. Bye guys.